back to Scarlet Rage Vintage. I know it's been a long time, I'm very sorry. But next to me, I have someone. Yay, I have twins. <laughs> um, it is of course BB Townsend. She has a YouTube channel. If you don't watch it, what have you been doing? You are Australian. Yep, I am. You have recently moved to the UK. Yes, 18 months around about I've been here. Wow. And you literally have started from scratch. Yeah, and for the second time as well, because I was in um, France before this. Ever since I was about 14, okay. I wanted to live overseas. For me, life is an adventure. Okay. I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. And weirdly enough, it's not the reason I moved this time, and I'll get into that. Okay. But at the age of 14, I was like, I'm going to live in New York, Paris, and London. I blame golden era movies because okay. they're always set in those cities. No, apparently no one goes anywhere else, maybe Rome. But yeah, sometimes there is a Rome, but that's a holiday kind of destination. Exactly, whereas, you know, everyone, um, poor, cool girls, um, apparently, you know, it's not vintage, but Carrie from Sex and the City, yeah. completely achievable to live on a pauper wage but have an amazing giant loft in a city like New York, Paris or London. Right at a point where I decided I wasn't gonna like focus my life around men, I then just moved countries for a man. Um, but I was going to move to Montreal. Okay. And then weirdly enough I met a Frenchman and ended up in Paris. Um, which I didn't love. I love Paris as a city, mm. I just don't love it as somewhere to live. It's an absolute bureaucratic nightmare. I have a lot of French family and I spent a lot of my childhood uh, in Paris. I don't like it either. Yeah, well I didn't speak the language, so I yeah, was a babysitter. Very hard. Which was hard, like when I'd worked really hard throughout my life and gathered a lot of skills and none of them yeah. were really relevant in that country, so I just had to like go back to, literally the first job I ever had was being a babysitter. Oh wow. I arrived in the country at 29 years old and I was a babysitter, I was like, oh. Hmm. <laughs> cool. How long were you in Paris for? So I lived there for 10 months um, and then my partner Val stayed on for three months while I went back to Australia. That cost a lot of money. Oh, to like live on people's couches for three months while I re-saved all the money I'd already spent moving to France right. to move to the UK. Not because we didn't like it, like to be honest, if I could have stayed in France I would have just been like, oh, I can make this work. Yeah. Um, but visa-wise the government changed over, I couldn't stay in the country. Yeah. Okay. So we decided to move here. Obviously, him being French, he has a European passport. Yeah. People from the UK can come over to Australia for a maximum of two years okay. on like an under 30 visa, okay. working holiday visa. Um, but they also have ancestry visas as well. I mean, there's lots of visa options okay. you can choose from. But um, I'm on an ancestry visa, so my grandparents, um, I have no idea which one I got approved on. So my grandpa. He was in the Australian Air Force during the war, but okay. he also flew for the RAF for D-Day. Oh, lovely. And then um, my grandmother was in the women's, I forget what the service is, but it's like the women's military police, I think, okay. during the war. And she was from the UK, so okay. they met actually while he was flying. Oh, lovely. That's such a cute story. They met in Egypt of all places. So, could have been one of them. Okay. And your, then, mom could've, your grandma could have been a spy. Yeah, I get the impression that might might have been the case. I cool. could be wrong, but I like that. We love it that. sounds glamorous and cool, so I'm just going to run I with it. I would totally run with that for the rest of my life. Yeah. Like, well, my grandma would have spy. Yeah. You're into vintage. Yeah. Were you into vintage when you were in Australia and in France? Yeah, totally. Um, I've been into vintage in general, probably not to this degree, okay. but ever since I was really young, the connection with my grandparents okay. was watching old Hollywood movies and things. Other people were wearing Ugg boots and track pants and I was like trying to find circle skirts and yeah. <laughs> like you've managed to bring it all together. There we go. <laughs> yeah, literally I'm doing it all today, it's the classic. <laughs> Anyone that knows me at all knows that I, could, I will jump ship in terms of what I wear constantly. Yeah. So I'll go true vintage, reproduction, mixing in modern stuff. Yeah. Sometimes I'll wear an entirely modern outfit and then I'll just stick like one thing on like a headscarf and I'm like, that'll do, I've got enough of that going on for today. Welcome to my life. Knowing where to meet people is the hardest part. Yeah. And I'm also a freelancer, so I don't have the added benefit of being able to go to a nine to five job every day yeah. where people are forced to hang out with me. The first people I met were, I have a Facebook group that I run and I said to people like, I now live in London, would anyone like to like come and have a picnic in Hyde Park? Hitting up people, like just being brave and hitting up people that I've been following forever. Like uh, one of the first people I met was Nora from Nora Finds. Yeah. I have been following her blog and her Instagram for for maybe eight years now. And she's a fellow, fellow Australian. Yeah, she's from Sydney, yeah. of all places. And like, she, she's moved over now to the UK. Exactly, yeah. 
Someone else that I met recently was Charlotte from Tuppence a Penny. Again, I've been following her forever. Looking at her and going, oh my god, these people were all dressed vintage and they hang out together because I didn't experience that in Australia. Okay. I was the only one of my friendship group who dressed vintage. Oh, wow. The first thing I went to was the pin-up um, picnic in the park. Oh, which I missed this year and I'm very, very sad because I normally go every single bloody year and I missed it this year. I feel like maybe if you go to some of the bigger festivals and things, there's so much of a focus and also people go in groups. Like, they'll stay yeah. together in dorms and stuff like yeah. that. So it can be a little bit harder, like people will chat to you, but it can be yeah. harder to just kind of end up sitting down and chatting for a long time no, and kind of connecting really well. The pit, that, that sort of event is not cliquey at all. I did a little bit of modeling for Revival Retro and what? then yeah. Rowena oh, yeah. said to me, um, oh, I have like these meetups, so you might as well come along, you'll meet some other people. Uh, actually, one of the major connections is um, Eva. She's definitely responsible for several of my friendships just because she was the connecting point and we bumped into someone new and now I hang out with them. The top tricks of uh, things if you're new to London that you should go and visit. Come and visit Jane at Scarlet Rage Vintage. Oh, that's very nice. Uh -huh. Thank you. Ding. That's uh, not in London though, but. No, that's not really in London. Well worth the one hour trip. If you fancy a trip to the seaside, then come see me. Well, that is a tip. After 18 months, you're definitely going to want to escape London. <laughs> like, yeah. As fabulous a city as it is. Yeah. Yeah, you need a break. It's hardcore. Yeah, I get mean, out I'm, of the city. I'm born and bred in London, so it's literally, that's home to me. So that high intensity kind of situation, that's, I think that's where I am, why I'm such a workaholic, because I literally lived in a very high paced, fast paced kind of living. Mm -hmm. So that kind of, if, if something's kind of slow, I just slightly revert and don't know what to do with myself. I start companies. But you pull it off so well. I mean, your wedding was amazing. Thank you. Having watched the, the vlogs and <laughs> seen all the photos on Instagram and everything, like, it was amazing. Yeah. And then the magazine is amazing, and then your business, like, your vintage business is amazing. Like, you do everything to a very high standard, just you know what the key is? Projects. Find people that are very good. Know your boundaries. Oh, yeah. And know what your skills are and what your not skills are. London is full of amazing shows, yeah. amazing museums, I mean you've got the Fashion and Textile Mag um, Museum, V&A, &A. &A, which has the Dior exhibition at the moment. Yeah. Which, if you go on Facebook and you just type in like Vintage Events London, yeah. there is so much going on. I really love architecture, Okay. so for me that is just getting out and about and looking up. There is a street in Whitechapel that has this amazing old bank building on it and there's photos on my Instagram I'm constantly going back there but I love just going down to the river and yeah and bank. just wandering down and you just look at all of the amazing architecture everything's expensive in London and you just have to kind of accept it yeah you earn money to enjoy life yes and that's part of living in London yeah it might be expensive to go out and catch the bus or the train or whatever but yeah. London does have a whole bunch of stuff that you can do where the event itself doesn't cost anything. oh yeah like the pinup picnic in the park. I'm part of a, this is not vintage related at all, sorry guys if you're not sporty, but I like running so I go to like the Adidas free run which is on oh, a amazing. couple of times a week. I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you B for coming. If yeah, you sure. want to carry on looking at this beautiful face, <laughs> you can follow her on Instagram. Also you can find her YouTube where she has a lot of uh, videos on styles, tips and tricks. All of her information will be linked down below. Thank you guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye! Bye. Ha <laughs>